And this is a video from the Daily Mail. Hamas fighters capture Israeli tank. But who is the one capturing tanks? And it's funny, by the way. Just, just watch and see. Fighters. Allahu Akbar Those are civilians. There's no fighters. Do you see a weapon? Look, they are stealing, they are looting. Look at the guy wearing Jalabiya. Do you know what Jalabiya is? Do you see the guy there? Those are not the fighters. They are coming to loot. But you can play the whole video and watch it yourself. I showed you the title. How in the world this happened? Why the tanks have nobody there? Nobody. There's nobody. You know, they could not open the tanks and get in. They do not know how to make them run. Otherwise, imagine Hamas now, they got like 30, 40 tanks taking them back to Gaza. But they don't know how to run them. No. Everybody is stealing something. Everybody is stealing something. Those are civilians. But no soldiers to be found. He is telling him to steal something from the bathroom. Wall forum, he is saying to me, Princess, are you looking for forward to the rupture? My friend, we have to rupture you first and send you to Allah. Just wait, it's coming. Thieves. But how in the world this is left without guards? How it was so easy? Nobody there. The whole country was in vacation. Shabbat Shalom. Saturday. It's an occasion to celebrate holiday. The whole country is asleep. And when I say the whole country, I mean it. Took them five hours after the attack. Five hours, imagine. To the Israeli army to recognize what's going on. Five hours. Extremely horrible. So this is the benefit number two. The Israeli have to learn for centuries to come. There's no day is a holiday. Not when you live between the snakes. Those who stupid Israeli, they went to sleep. The whole country. Not only that, actually, I heard that the, uh, the Israeli intelligence, they stopped watching the phones of Hamas for more than three to four years ago. Why? Because it's a waste of time. They don't watch them no more. That's it. I mean, at least watch the, the leaders. The Israeli security companies, they are giving their software to hijack or to hack phones around the world. They give it to Emirates. They give it to Kuwait. They give it to Saudi Arabia. Everybody use their software. They send you one text message to your iPhone. They open the phone. As easy as that. But the Israeli technology decide to stop watching the terrorist phones. So lesson number three, never stop watching your enemies. Phones. Computers. Media. 
satellite. What is number four? After the attack, took them more than 20 days to prepare themselves to go to war. The Israeli, because now they trust their powerful army. Oh, we have a powerful army, massive, strong technology. We have nukes. We can nuke everybody. We can burn the earth, actually. Who's going to dare to attack us? Who is the stupid who would do so? There's a lot of stupid that would do so. So listen, number four, it doesn't matter how powerful your army is. You have always to stay vigilant for your enemy is waiting for the moment of weakness. What else? You have a few friends. Very few friends. The stupid Israeli, they thought, if they sign peace agreement with Imorat, Imorat is their friend. They are not. If we sign a peace agreement with the, oh, if we have business with Erdogan, Erdogan who is a threat in Israel, and not only that, he says, you know, like there is a, the war will happen between the Christians and the Muslims. Bring it, you idiot! I will be happy to see you fighting me, you coward, son of Muta. Erdogan, who his country live from the money of the American. Go check out how many billion dollars every year Turkey get from the NATO and specifically from the stupid American. What will happen to the Turkey currency if the American now announce they stop buying anything from Turkey? In fact, the American is the one who gave him a hand to launch his currency, which was collapsing a few years ago. You have no friends except the true Christians. Because remember, there's false Christians who will support your enemy against you. There's many scumbags, they call themselves Christians, but they are willing to support Hamas against you. So don't trust friends. And don't trust support of others, because that can disappear any moment. Biden did not support you, by the way. It's not his choice. 412 congressmen, they vote for Israel against 9 or 10 against Israel. So he had to go with a trend. Otherwise, he is against you too. He is the puppy of Obama. But what if this has changed? What if in 10 years, 20 years, the new generation, they are the one who is in the Congress. And as you know, the new generation is hippies. You know, ring in the nose, ring in the toes, ring in the vagina, ring in the anus, ring everywhere, except one ring. The fighting ring, they are not there. What if those, they become in charge of the Congress of America? Who is going to support you? So get ready for the bad days to come. For those who they might be your friend today, they might be your enemy tomorrow. I'm just being truthful and I'm saying things as it is. Things have to be said as it is. For enough is enough. Get your army ready always. You do not need 20 days to prepare yourself to go to war. You should be ready to go to war any second, any moment. You are in the Middle East.
and those who you think you signed peace agreement with them, they would love to see you dead. This is not a peace agreement. This is your death warrant. So you can go sleep and you snore so they can attack you when they are ready. Actually, this is the Quran statement. The Quran said, Cry not for peace. Speaking to Muslims. When you are the uppermost. So when we cry for peace, when you are not the uppermost. Very simple. If you look